Hey everybody, I'm Green Havoc. And I'm Cyanize. And this is ESHQ's Good Luck, Have Fun. Justice reigns from above. No one can hide from my sight. Die! Die! Cheers, love! The cavalry's here! Hey everybody and welcome to Good Luck, Have Fun, where we're going to be breaking down who we think is going to win this week in the Overwatch League, starting with Wednesday the 17th. San Francisco Shock is going to be going up against the Philadelphia Fusion. So, uh, Cyanice, do you have an opinion on this game? You know, I'm really excited about this game. We were really able to see what Philadelphia Fusion had last week. And, you know, the Shock surprisingly didn't do as good as I as I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, they are very much a get-in-your-face type team, the Shock are. And Philadelphia Fusion, I feel like they have the potential to take on the Shock and win with a 2-3. Okay, a 2-3. I think that uh, I think that's fair. Um, for me I'm I'm going with the 3-1 personally. Um, I think if I think if the shock activate the way they really can. If they really can get behind Baby Bay and keep him safe mm-hmm. and and get that coordination, they could um, they could get the victory, but I I just think it's too exploitable right now. Oh. I think their I think their roster's clearly waiting on the addition of Sinatra. Mm-hmm. And that flexibility when it comes to who they who they and how they can play in the uh, the defensive or DPS categories, I completely agree. I mean, Baby Bay is their basically one point of failure. Mm-hmm. So once he goes, their damage drops off significantly. Exactly, and he doesn't play uh, the type of characters that he can kind of avoid. He basically plays focal point characters where he can really get isolated and. If the team can't protect him, and to a certain point, they really can only do so much. I just feel like the right now, the San Francisco Shock are in an exploitable area, and I feel like the Philadelphia Fusion are a team that has the, the ability to exploit it. I completely agree. <laughs> I, a little back and forth, though. Ultimately, you gave it a, a 3-2. And, yep, mm-hmm. and uh, I gave it a three-one, and I feel like this next game's a little further from those score lines. Um, <laughs> we've got the Florida Mayhem versus the Seoul Dynasty. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go ahead and start us off if you don't mind. Sure, no, go for it. I went zero uh, and four for the floor. No, for Seoul Dynasty. <laughs> for, for Seoul Dynasty, and I, I think uh, a lot of us are a little disappointed with what we're seeing out of Florida Mayhem anyway. Yeah, and I really think. He, there is a limited amount of critiques that you can even give to the Soul Dynasty. I completely agree. They have a ceiling in their ability to play against the other teams. Like they're they're good. They're professional players, but they aren't on the same level mm-hmm. as the rest of the league. In, it's, a, in a way, you could say the the Soul Dynasty's floor is at a lot of the other teams' ceilings. I com- yes, exactly. And Florida Mayhem is is barely scratching that floor that Mm -hmm. uh, Soul Dynasty puts down. So I completely agree with your score with Soul Dynasty taking it 4-0. It's not... If you want to watch a game where it's a complete shutout, it's going to be this game. Mm -hmm. Dynasty is going to mop the floor with Mayhem, and Mayhem is just... They aren't going to be able to do anything about it. Even if they come out with strategies that no one has seen before, Dynasty is such a flexible team that mm-hmm. they'll be able to react to it. And, and flexible is a good word because the the thing we've seen most from the Soul Dynasty in their first two games is the fact that they are constantly adapting, changing, moving around uh, their strategies. The way they beat Dallas Fuel on Anubis is a great example of the way that they they kept attacking with slight changes. Do we do this? Do we do that? Do we like this? And they just kept taking the map a little a little more decisively each time. Oh yeah, and. The, the Florida Mayhem haven't shown us very many looks. They're a team of six. They don't have players to sub in. Uh, you would hope that if you're a team of six that there's a, a huge level of synergy, but we're not even seeing a crazy level of synergy. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're a team that plays the meta and cannot go away from that. Mm-hmm. They, I, I, yeah, no flexibility. And uh, I, I think maybe with, um, depending on when, uh, when and if the mercy changes go live, and when and if those hit the Overwatch League, I think that maybe could help 
the Florida Mayhem out a little bit with the way in the style they play. I don't think the Mercy meta is conducive to the way they like to to try to accomplish goals. Sure. But I still don't know if that even a change that big is going to be quite enough to move them out of the at the lower bracket, if you will, as right. far as the Overwatch League. Yeah. So wrapping up day one, we have the Houston Outlaws versus the Shanghai Dragons, and <laughs> this I, is this is another game where if you want to watch one team kind of basically rock the other one the entire match, it's going to be this one. The Houston Outlaws didn't come last week with a full uh you know head on their shoulders i mean they they played but they also made a lot of mistakes mm-hmm. they didn't play to their full potential but the shanghai dragons they have yet to win a game or a match and the houston outlaws are going to win this one for me it's going to be a 4-0 houston outlaws and i i, I agree i'm gonna go with a 4-0 as well however I think uh, the big reason I want to see the 4-0 is because it's what H- it's what Houston should be getting. I think they've been struggling a lot in the, uh, the kind of, it's it's weird. I don't want to say that their team strategy hasn't been there, but there's been that edge, that razor's edge that just qu- isn't quite there in the way that they're attacking into team fights, the way they're handling um, opposition, whether it's, I mean, ult usage has been, I mean, good, but not great. The plays they've been making have been solid, but not amazing. Right. I, I feel like there's a, a highlight level that we're just not seeing from the from the Houston Outlaws. I, I completely agree. And... Really, I was actually uh, caught doing this. Was Jake from the Houston Outlaws mm-hmm. is a great player. He's mm-hmm. he's great, but he isn't. He isn't like a one v six. I can take you on type player either. We I've been ramping him up a lot because I thought he was he was incredible. I mean, he was at the 2017 World Cup mm-hmm. Overwatch, and he did amazing there. But he having that level of skill and expecting that level of skill every week was, I shouldn't have expected that. Mm -hmm. You know, he, his other teammates also need to pull their weight as well. And it's going to be interesting to see, and and, and not saying they aren't, but everyone, everyone needs to contribute completely and be on that level and have that edge. All of them need to be. Yeah. I, 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 that, that's the, honestly the best way to sum it up is they just need to get, that it factor and it doesn't need to come from all of them all of the time but they need to make it shine a little bit more but i I gotta ask this though because the shanghai dragons are a team that we've uh we've both said off uh off mic Mm -hmm. that we also see potential but if so if you had to say what is what is the number one thing that you would want to see from the the shanghai dragons to start to hit that uh that next level stride because I mean, they're all professionals. We know they all have the potential, but what would you say is uh, that that it factor, that that little something extra you'd like to see from the Shanghai Dragons this week? You know, it's uh, the dynasty has it, and we've talked about this before. Is the flexibility? Okay. They get trapped into a mindset of we're going to stick here, we're going to stay in this one place, and we're not going to let them through. And when that doesn't work, they try to continue to stay there. They try to continue working on that same path and. When something doesn't work like that, you need a change. So you'd like to see um, kind of a little more what the uh, L.A. Uh, Gladiators are doing, where they like to uh, they like to back up, they like to give space, mm-hmm. but when they realize they're giving too much space, when they know they need to put pressure, they're not afraid to put the, their foot on the gas pedal. That's right. They they switch out with their aggressive champions. They get that Winston. They get that Diva. They go in with uh, the Tracer. They make sure if they aren't being as aggressive they switch over to those characters and be aggressive they make sure that they change their strategy midway in order to get the edge over the other team mm-hmm. okay I, I like that for me the the uh, the thing i would like to see from them and it's similar to what you're saying mm-hmm. uh i would like to see them i would like to see them ice because all right so on anubis and you broke this down on um uh, GG Well Play yep. this past week, they were holding the high point on Anubis, the the, the May jump with the the uh, Arissa. Yep, they've got the Widowmaker, they've got Zenyatta, they've got um, uh, Mercy up there with them, and 
this isn't a bad strategy. We saw other teams do this. Oh, yeah. But one of the things we saw the other teams do is it, they never overcommitted to holding that one area. Right. They would have the Orissa up there. They'd have the Widow up there. And that would be it. Mm -hmm. And the Mercy would kind of fly in and out when needed. Right. And that way you couldn't do what the uh, the Gladiators did to Shanghai, which was just jump right on top of them and force the team fight in one area. So the thing I would like to see from Shanghai is really flushing out these strategies to to that next level. Not necessarily more aggressive, but if if you're going to commit to a strategy, make sure you're doing it the way the strategy needs to be done. Right. Because I feel like if... If you, you're shooting yourself in the foot right off the bat with the strategy, you're just guaranteeing that you can't make it up with mechanical skill. That's right. And and really, I, I hope that the other teams look at that round and say, and understand that they shouldn't put all of their eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. You know, their strategies need to be flexible. Even from the get-go, it's like, oh, they're doing this, so let's, let's just move this person in another area. You know, that would be, if they split... Even if they split their team in half, three up on the rise and three down below or spread out, they probably could have held that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even so, any strategy that puts all of your eggs in one basket, everything is is driven to this one point. And if this point fails, then we fail. A little more mobile aggression. I I I, I totally agree. Um, any parting thoughts as uh, as far as any of these games before we get on out of here? Really to. Uh, this this day specifically is going to be kind of an interesting day, and and it's going to be super important for the Mayhem and Dragons. If they can pull off a win on either of these teams, that's going to throw the whole balance askew, and creating chaos would be super helpful for them. Um, the first game, I feel like it's going to be the best game, the closest game for sure. Okay, I, I, I very much agree with that. And uh, I, I would say my parting thought is I think the Houston Outlaws, they need to get the 4-0 because I think they need to hit that stride. They need to hit that sprint. They need to get a little confidence. They took uh, two bad losses in the first week, and I, I really think they need to bounce back. So, Oh, yeah, definitely. Anyway, guys, this has been our opinion of match day one of week two of the Overwatch League's inaugural season. Good luck. Have fun. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe and join the conversation down in the comments. It really helps us out a lot. And if there's any other content you would like to see from us, make sure to let us know because we're all ears here at ESHQ.